Hey, look, the TP trunk test, it's back. Subscribe, you won't get this test anywhere else. Want an electrified vehicle with no range issues whatsoever? One that doesn't need a huge expensive battery or a charging station network? I'm talking plug-in hybrids. That's what the 2021 Toyota RAV4 Prime is. It runs on electricity, but has a gasoline engine for some 600 miles of total range. This is not a new concept. I've advocated this tech for years and own two of them myself. For those nervous about going electric, it's perfect for discovering the advantages of EVs. For starters, far fewer trips to the gas station, you might only stop in for a Coke. I've driven plug-in hybrids with real-world all-electric range as low as 10 miles. Not so great. Toyota claims 42 with the Prime, which is good, but not as good as, say, Chevy Volt. I can normally get at least 50 miles out of one of those, but uh, the Chevy Volt is no longer made, partly a victim of bad marketing and the fact that it's a sedan-like hatchback. People want SUVs these days. The RAV is Toyota's best-selling vehicle in the U.S., with the take rate on the existing hybrid model skyrocketing to 25%. So if Toyota, unlike General Motors, decides to actually tell people that the RAV4 Prime exists, it should slay in the marketplace. A quick primer, charge it up and Prime behaves like an electric vehicle. In my two-day experience, it always defaulted to pure EV mode with the battery juiced, unless I selected otherwise. Once the pack is depleted, it seamlessly switches to a regular hybrid dynamic. No need for a huge expensive battery. Most daily driving is covered using the pack. And if not, the gas engine is always there to save your bacon. And yes, fully fueled, Toyota claims Prime can cover some 600 miles. So if you run out of gas, that's on you. All right, let's get to what everybody wants to know. Does this go 42 miles on battery power alone? Yes, I got exactly 42 miles. Now keep in mind, it's 75 degrees out. That's pretty much ideal for the batteries. That's in stop and go city driving at lower speeds. A second test, heavy on highway mileage, saw 38 miles of pure EV travel. Run prime without charging, which kind of defeats the purpose. And the average estimated fuel economy rating is 38 miles per gallon. Not too far off the 40 MPG figure of the hybrid RAV4. Conservatively, charging every night offers 13 15,000 miles of pure electric travel annually. A personal note, my wife and I buy one to two tanks of gas a year for our plug-in hybrids. Yes, a year. Let's check out the mechanicals. The gas side is a 2.5 liter four cylinder that by itself makes 177 horsepower and 165 pound feet of torque. It's paired with three motor generators because like the RAV4 hybrid, all wheel drive is standard on the Prime and the back tires are driven by an electric motor. There's no physical shaft running to the back. Total system power is 302 horsepower, 83 more than the hybrid model. The transmission is a continuously variable unit, and I'll thank Toyota right now for equipping it with a velvety smooth selector that I highly prefer to the joystick found in Prius. The top trim XSE model that I'm driving adds paddles for simulated manual shifts. They can also change the rate of regeneration drag. In some plug-in hybrids, the gasoline engine doesn't directly connect to the drive wheels. It simply runs a generator that provides electricity to power the car. Here, the four-cylinder definitely connects to the drive wheels. In other words, Prime is a parallel hybrid. On startup, I never experienced the four-cylinder turning over. It's very quiet. People buying this will probably want to use the gas engine as little as possible. I know it's a game that I play with my plug-in hybrid, but they might be worried that the gas will go bad. That's a legit concern, but the system is smart enough to know when that's about to happen and will force the four cylinder on and burn up the fuel. The floor-mounted 18.1 kilowatt hour lithium-ion pack is cooled by air conditioning refrigerant. On average, it reduces ground clearance by about a half inch. It's 8.3 inches with the XSE model. To save the battery for city motoring, where it's most efficient, a hold mode maintains the charge level. Charge mode uses the four-cylinder to juice up the pack, though typically that's not very efficient. 
You'll need easy access to an outlet to get the most out of Prime. Any voltage will do. Overnight on standard 120 current took just under 12 hours for me. 240 level 2 drops that to 4.5 hours, and optional package drops that to 2.5. Switching from EV mode to EV auto means the gas engine kicks on with a more aggressive throttle foot, improving performance. Different drive settings change the color of the knob and the gauge cluster graphics as well. The Prime communicates very clearly. Now remember, in pure EV mode, the gasoline engine is not assisting when it comes to power, so it's not going to be as fast. Uh, that just makes sense. In this setting, the four-cylinder does not ignite even if the throttle is floored. Prime XSE weighs 4,300 pounds, 500 more than the hybrid RAV4, so 0 to 60 miles an hour takes around 10 seconds in EV mode. The rich torque makes it feel faster. It's exceptionally smooth in this mode. Of course it is. It's an electric vehicle. And really, the acceleration is about the same as a Prius and People have been living with that for years and years and years, so that shouldn't be an issue. Now, if you want to go faster, put it into auto mode or sport. Uh, there, a 5.7 second zero to 60 time, not too shabby. Here, the gas engine smoothly and quickly kicks in for more oomph. The throttle pedal lacks an indent or click to signal drivers where the four-cylinder might turn over. It's about how aggressive your foot is. Toyota's pushing the Prime as a performance variant, claiming it's among the fastest vehicles in its lineup. It should appeal to tree and corner huggers. Not an awful lot of road feel coming up through the steering wheel, but dynamically, the RAV4 Prime corners really well because heavy batteries down in the floor lowers the center of gravity. It does feel heavier than other RAV4s. The more luxurious BMW X3 xDrive 30e plug-in hybrid is noticeably more precise and fun in corners, but only delivers half the all-electric range. Prime drives like a regular vehicle. There's no excessive regeneration drag for one-pedal driving. Like any EV or hybrid, coasting and braking sends power back to the battery pack. The transition from regeneration to the actual physical disc brakes is really well done here, not lumpy at all. You know, Toyota has had years and years to figure this out. The simulated manual shifts are a bit vague and don't hold long before the transmission defaults back to an automatic mode. I gripe about continuously variable transmission dynamics. This one's okay. Of all the Toyota hybrid transmission dynamics I've experienced, this one is my favorite by far. It's unobtrusive. You really don't notice it all that much. Very little of that rubber bandy dynamic. Rubber bandy, throwing out technical terms now. Toyota Safety Sense 2.0 is standard kit. It includes automatic emergency braking with pedestrian and bicyclist detection, a good adaptive cruise control, lane departure and keep assist, plus automatic high beams. Prime can tow 2,500 pounds, which slots in between different RAV4 models. Let's push past all the tech and talk about ride quality. This is a comfortable vehicle. The family will like it. It soaks up big bumps nicely and motoring around this neighborhood. It's quiet. I'm in hybrid mode right now and you really don't hear the gas engine all that much. Uh, out on the highway, a little bit more road noise than I would have expected. That said, the stretch of freeway I was testing on was on the rough side. Pay attention while test driving. RAV4 Prime is available in two trim levels, Base SE and this Top Shelf XSE. In addition to paddle shifters, the fancier model adds ambient lighting, a 9-inch touchscreen, standard size glass roof, wireless phone charging, black roof treatment, and 19-inch wheels. The heated seats, powered for the driver, are soft techs, not leather. The cloth panels are breathable and grippy. An $850 weather package buys a toasty wheel and heated back seats. Another $1,600 upgrades the sound system and provides navigation. The $5,700 premium package adds all that and a digital rear view mirror, head up display, panoramic glass roof, vented front seats, bird's eye camera view, the faster charging system, and more. That puts it solidly into Lexus luxury territory. Oh, wait, Toyota's premium brand does not have a plug in hybrid. At least not yet. 
All the usual storage slots, bins, and cubbies are here, plus a couple extra that are especially handy to have. This one's perfect for a wallet. All right, maybe not a fat one. The touchscreen interface with physical buttons flanking it is the usual Toyota fare. The response is not the snappiest, and graphics are somewhat plain, but they are easy to read. Hey, a shout out to Kai Rizdal and Molly Wood on NPR there. Great reporters. Uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and Alexa integration are standard kit now. No more complaining about that. I hear the Prime's back seat is the same as the regular RAV4. You've stolen my thunder. Doesn't take much. Well, you're here, I'm gonna tell you about it anyways. Uh, the back seat is the same size as the regular RAV4. Uh, head, knee, foot, and leg room for five foot nine guys like us is very, very good. Door openings are big enough so that car seats go in and out okay. Plus, the cushions are high enough so that thigh support is excellent. In the last RAV4 that I evaluated, there was no pocket here. I must have some influence in the industry, huh? This is a family vehicle. Really nice to have not just one, but two power ports. Let's see, door pockets, a little on the small side, but useful. Nice to know that heated seats are an option in the back seat. A shout out to my Minnesota friends. The cushions actually get a little bit of sculpting, which makes them more comfortable. Overall, two adults will be perfectly fine back here with lots of space. A third will be fine for short trips around town. Consider this the new Camry because RAV4 is now the most popular passenger vehicle sold in America. It used to be Camry, now it's this. Yes, the TP trunk test is back, at least for this episode to think not long ago, I could have sold this on the black market and probably paid for one of these. Prime's additional componentry means a loss of four cubic feet of space. Engineers save the spare tire, though. Great when trekking into the wild. The floor has a slight angle. If hauling loose golf balls is your thing, it could be an issue. No remote seat releases, but the latches are easy enough to reach. Like any RAV4, dropping the split seat backs does not result in a completely flat load floor, and skiers that haul three passengers will need to get a roof rack. No pass through. The beauty of a constant measuring metric is apparent here. Both standard and hybrid RAV4 models will take on nine packs of softness and absorbency. The last one would go right here, and that's not going to happen with Prime, so it's downgraded to eight. Still, not bad. And just like the regular RAV4, the power tailgate is really slow. Really, really slow. There. Okay, let's talk price and availability. Prime can be had in all 50 states. With shipping, a base SE retails for around $39,200. The XSE goes for $42,500. But the $7,500 federal tax credit makes it more cost competitive. With it, the more powerful Prime is about $2,200 more than a comparably equipped hybrid model. And if your state offers tax credits, that drops further. Consider that the gas engine doesn't run nearly as much as a regular car are even a hybrid, so it should require less maintenance, saving money. Another advantage of plug-in hybrids is you don't necessarily have to install a level two charging system in your home. That can be expensive. The gas engine always has your back, but that brings up a negative. Unlike an EV, there's a gas engine that you have to maintain. Oil changes and all. But long-range pure EVs are pricey. The least expensive Tesla Model Y goes for $53,000 at the moment, and a Kia Niro EV starts at around 40 grand, but is not available with all-wheel drive. Nero, Ford Escape, and the Chrysler Pacifica van are available as plug-in hybrids, but none offer all-wheel drive. Subaru Crosstrek gets that, but its all-electric range is only 17 miles. All right, people, time for red light, green light, the new overview that I'm doing. Green light, 42 miles of all electric range. That means buyers will seldom need the four cylinder, eliminating most gas station visits. That's ideal in extreme climates. It's powerful, quiet, comfortable, and requires no thought whatsoever on the operator's part. And no other plug-in hybrid SUV offers this kind of utility and all wheel drive in a mainstream package. 
Yellow light. Compared to other RAV4s, the cargo area is slightly smaller and the load floor slopes. Compared to a pure EV, there's an engine to maintain, though you might have heard Toyota has a certain reputation for reliability. And for some, RAV4's design is too severe. That's a personal choice. Red light. Toyota says it's making 5,000 for the US in 2020. That seems very low and may drive dealer transaction prices up. In short, Toyota is staking out a unique position with RAV4 Prime. It's roomy, powerful, quiet, comfortable, environmentally responsible, and has the SUV and EV attributes that people want without any range anxiety. If you have an outlet handy, it could be the perfect family vehicle. If Toyota markets this properly, the masses will finally realize that plug-in hybrids are ready for prime time. Look, I understand that the world is going towards pure EVs, and I'm a fan of that, especially when it's a Porsche Taycan, but for the foreseeable future, battery tech isn't quite there. It's expensive, the charging infrastructure isn't fully built out for long distance travel, and automakers are scrambling to source batteries. Right now, there's somewhat of a finite supply. I see plug-in hybrids as a good bridge for the next five years or so. They're especially good for folks in rural areas, especially ones not served by a charging infrastructure. Okay, I'm gonna hammer home once again why plug-in hybrids are so terrific. Uh, 42 miles of range in this case, that'll take care of most people's commute. And then if you wanna go on a long vacation to the Grand Canyon, you just simply switch fuel sources, gas and go. No range anxiety at all. If you're new to my videos, I own a Cadillac ELR. My wife has a Chevy Volt. Uh, basically, we gas up once or twice a year and change our oil as scheduled every two years or so. I also have a 1990 Mazda Miata that I don't get to drive nearly enough. You've made it to the very end. I must be doing something right. So subscribe to this channel, click notifications and like, leave a comment. It all helps the algorithm and it's free for you. And in return, I give you fun facts. I'm sort of famous for that. This one is why Toyota is not really all that keen on battery electric vehicles. I talked to a Toyota engineer and he claims that the company feels that hybrids reduce overall emissions and people accept them more and they don't use up all the batteries. So that's why they're really big into hybrid technology. Good to see that they've got a plug-in hybrid at least. And uh, yeah, they're big into hydrogen. There's a second generation Mirai coming and there will be battery electric vehicles in other markets other than America, but uh, don't hold your breath for the US. Maybe, maybe not. Depends on battery technology, I guess. There you go. There's your fun fact. Thanks for watching. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.